I think from our from our inception, um, there's been a mantra, a motto. I don't think we keyed it, but we we really really try to stay true to it since the beginning. It's one student at a time. So when I think about equity, is how do we recognize, truly recognize every single student? And we start there. How do we see every single student? How do we know every single student? But not in a superficial level, you know what I mean? But truly know our student, their background, their family, their interests, their aspirations, their heartache, their trauma, all those things. Um, a lot of us talk about data points. I mean, there's a lot of jargon and like data-driven this, data-driven that. To us, those are the heart and soul of our work and those are the data points that are really important to us. So when we think about equity, is that a direct alignment to those data points? Um, because those data points let us know who our students are and we could build curriculum around that. That's how we develop uh, a framework in supporting students to have equitable learning experiences based on the students. So having this design, this curriculum, this pedagogy based on the student, I think just falls hand in hand with equity um, because it's about every single student. Uh, but we're also, I wanna be clear, in addition to that, that's like holistically, but it's also as an organization being fully conscious and aware of the integrated racial uh, oppression um, that is alive and thriving in our system and seeing how that manif manifests in, in our students' lives and how that impacts them and really, really making sure that we have those courageous conversations with our young people and first is having those conversations, acknowledging that reality with our young people and then equipping them with the skills and know-how and how to navigate that. And, you know, there's a lot of traditional talk about equity, but I want to talk about something that when it comes to equity that we don't get a lot of time to talk about, but what I think is a keystone and pillar to big picture learning is social capital. Um, that is an equity issue for our young people. Why? Because we honor and acknowledge our current families in our communities and their network, which is beautiful uh, because there is a lot of beauty in our community as far as like we help raise our young people. But depending in our neighborhood, the social capital for opening up other doors connected to their future are very limited. And our internship program does exactly that. Why? Because they are now exposed to other professionals in certain industries that really link them up with other folks that open up more doors. I can't even tell you how many mentors have hired our young people and have been the first job for so many of our young people. How many of our mentors write recommendation letters for our students to get into colleges? Um, directly align and guide our students into CTE pathways. When we think about equity, um, the social capital of young people is an equitable issue of our time for our young people. And then giving them a direct line into knowing more people who can open up more doors that's directly aligned to their future is an equity issue too as, as well. And that's what we're doing day in and day out with um, our internship program. The only way to keep e equity at the center of the work is constantly to be talking about it, is to not be scared, to always be engaging in that conversation, to build the kind of relationships with teachers where you can call out things that you see, right? Being able to say to a teacher, you know, I notice a pattern in the students you seem to be butting heads with. Can we talk a little bit about that? Um, and to feel a sense of safety with the adults that they know that it's not an attack. It's really about learning and growing and being better. So talking about it in that way, talking about it in staff meetings, um, overtly naming it as a goal and as something that's important. Um, that can be a minefield in and of itself. Uh, looking to hire this year and trying to make sure that we are truly representative for all students. Um, trying to deliver that. So I'd say number one, you, you can't be scared to talk about it, to bring it up, to, to drive your car right at it. Um, and that, that's hard. I think the second way is true authorization of student voice because 
the students get it. They, they, they have a whole different perspective and a way that they attack that that's so different than we do because of generational shift, time that's gone on, the reality of their experience. So I also think one huge way that equity has to exist is through true authorization of student voice, like true authorization. I go to lots of high schools or I've been to lots of high schools where they're like, oh yeah, we have an ASB. Uh, that's not what I mean. Right. I'm glad that the kids put up, put up those posters and that they're in charge of the pep rally and that, that that's all great. But did they choose to do this pep rally? And what is this event for? And how did they design it? And do they see value in it? And it's okay if the value is purely cultural and fun. That's important too. But student voice has to be true and real. And to be true and real, they have to be designing, be thinking, be implementing, be redesigning. And that's hard sometimes in the world of education where, no, no, that's not how we've done it, right? We've been doing it this way since I was in school and it works. Well, it, it worked for you uh, and that's good, but maybe it won't work for everybody. So true student-driven, true student voice.